supposed to. Or let Earl Scruggs go give him a place out on the bypass. And maybe uh, get a lot more traffic uh, than being downtown at the courthouse. I think they can have a lot better traffic here to get out on the bypass. And if it's a for profit center, the taxpayer should get the profit. That's right. It's not a for profit. So nobody's going to make any money on this? It's not a for profit. Earl Scruggs don't make money. I don't think that's right. Can they just let it down? Let's get it. No, no, let's have it. If you want me to stay here, I'll be glad to stay and answer the questions that I know are the answer. DCC, DCC is a charitable, is chartered as a charitable organization, which means it's a non-profit. So if they make a profit, they lose the charter and they become a for-profit organization. And, and is their budget public? But let me tell you how things can operate and not take that profit and they reinvest it. It's how there's no profit you but take profit and you reinvest it in another building and another something, then that's how there's no profit. But it's still open. Right, it has to be reinvested. And at the end of this time, if they decide they want to, de to dissolve this corporation, it has to go to another nonprofit organization. You know, it, it can't go back to line the pockets. But I'll tell you how some pockets can get lined if I can make a little sideline here. What we're looking at as of January of 2007 is revitalization master plan of the city of city, downtown. And I'm not going to get on that because if, if you all need to do this. But we're looking at the Marrington, which is going to be going up next to the Rogers Theater. And this will be a um, high rise with uh, uh, condominiums with stores down below. This should bring a tax base in of about $13 million, which will increase the city's tax base. Uh, the, the price of those goes from the mid, the, the two or three bedroom <coughs> it'll go from the mid 300000 up to like 700000 Now, somebody will, this, this, you know, in the revitalization, somebody will have some profits there. There will be profits of anybody who's willing to invest in property and refurbish it. Our farmer's market, I know that's another contention, and y'all don't even want to hear about that one, but that's going to be at $8 million. We'll be able to get grants to do that, but that will be up still shop and up above, that will be condominiums and the farmers markets are going to avoid the paper tailgate two mornings a week from April until October off the back of the trucks I guess somewhere uptown to do it. Now anyway that is um it, it has uh it, it, there will be some opportunities for some entrepreneurs to make money here. But I understand what Ed's saying about there will be uh, if this is non profit. That, uh, that that what they do has got to be reinvested in something. Now, Earl Scruggs will probably uh, receive a, a, a profit. Uh, Brandon said they were going to sell his souvenirs. Am I right, Judy? Yes. And so uh, and that would include CDs, I suppose, and that money would go directly to them. She said, now, that, she said that they would be buying his the souvenirs from his people. Now, in the beginning, uh, he wanted 90% of the dollar. I don't know where they are on this now, but I know this from, from the beginning. That, 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 so there will be some money to be made in their goal somewhere for, uh, for this. I think in, in what you're saying, yeah. if you're talking sure. about yeah. money at the door, yeah. there's a difference between if they're publicizing the theater and the courthouse still is. The money may be from the theater, but not from the courthouse. And answer your question in the event, and I just had this last week to check to make sure it's in there, in the event that, that whoever goes in that building, if it don't succeed, everything in the building belongs to the county. Oh, yes, Any, anything that they attach to the walls of the building belongs to the building. Let me take just a minute and see if there's anybody else that, that wants in on this. Do we have anybody that's running for office here? Do we have anybody else that uh, stand up and tell us who you are. Let us know if we can get you in. Right? Tell us what you're running for. My name is Jason Falls. I'm our county commissioner this year. Uh, and uh, I was asked to come just talk. And, and, you know, my opinion on it is I've been researching this a lot over the past couple of days since you made the phone call. Um, because I haven't been to a lot of the meetings. Um, you know, I don't, I don't do I it all. I didn't invite you. I invited all the ladies. Why don't you come up to the front? Come on. And then I'll add it.
if anybody else is running for office, we appreciate you all running because I want you to look at these two guys. Actually, Mike and Mike decided they don't want to run. They were kind of going to leave the dinner and come over here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
John will get you John John three Lord. more days, eighty three dollars, you can run for commissioner. Anybody is willing to, to pay uh, the seating, the whipping for what? I think that's one percent of what you get, which would be eighty three hundred dollars a year. If you're really to take the whipping, go out there and the part eighty three hundred dollars is what will be back down, yeah. If anybody's got an agenda, they want to press against their own personal agenda forward, run for a, the county commissioner seat that are available, and you'll get on the commission, and therefore you can press your agenda forward to the people. No, no, that's not we what we want. want. Yeah. That's where they came back because we got some commissioners that allowed them to take over. They, uh, are, they are self-appointed. And we got commissioners that like them, and they like what they're doing. Face the fact. Okay. I, I think a lot of people like what they're doing. They just don't like where they're doing it. I don't care if they have to I don't like center, what they do. I don't like what they do. Brandon, we call them two gentlemen up first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 thank you, Sue. Thank you. Let's clap and back there. Keep it straight. Hi, my name is Jason Ball. I am from Cleveland County. I grew up, my grandparents worked at Lily Mills, so I grew up around there, so I'm very familiar with the area. Um, I, I didn't know enough about DCC and about what was going on, um, but over the last couple of days I have, I have been reading, I have been studying, I have been visiting places. Uh, I went by the courthouse today and just walked up and looked in the windows and I was embarrassed, to be honest with you. And that's not something that is a reflection on the county commissioners that are sitting there now because that much damage could not have been done over the past few years. I mean, that's not a reflection on them. And I've got a lot of respect for the people that are in this room that you want to come out and voice your, voice your opinion. For the county commissioners, for the work that they do, because I've already seen. I mean, I filed about two weeks ago and I've already been beat up and stuff. To be honest. So, but I'm ready for it. That's what, that's, I want to give back to the community. Um, and I have a lot of respect for the people at DCC because they are out there trying to better the community the way that they feel needs to be done. Even though we may not agree with it, uh, I do agree with some of the premises they have. I agree with some of the information that I've got here tonight, too. I think the biggest issue that I have heard so far has been there's a lack of effective communication. It's that communication is in certain pockets and some people get excited because they, they're they working with this project. Uh, I think this has happened. I listened to a podcast last night for 45 minutes on the STAR website and uh, you could tell the excitement in the voice of people from the DCC, from Browning Voice. Um, and I think that that is sometimes when you get excited, I think you say some things that you may not know for sure is going to happen. And I think that's where a lot of it's come from. Questions I've heard tonight. Uh, I've, I've talked to David Deer. I called and talked to him today, and I talked to him a couple of days ago. Um, the question of why something hasn't been done yet, the lease hasn't been done yet, they are still looking at opportunities and trying to figure out the best way of doing things. And they, there's some opportunities for some grants that are possibly out there um, to help as far as the revitalization of the courthouse of the courthouse um, that if they do a lease it could affect how that those grants would happen so I think that, it, that it's being done in a way that is going to, that's going to try to save the county taxpayers as much money as we can I appreciate people being the saying that they're willing to, to put more money in that courthouse um, you know the first time I was in the courthouse was whenever I was there I met, I met my mother a retired school teacher and she took me to meet Jim Hunt there uh, and I remember that. I mean, I was a little kid, you know. So I, I, I agree. I'd be willing to pay a little bit extra in my taxes to, to revitalize that courthouse. But I don't want my taxes to go away. You know, so, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. I'm not going to change my opinion tonight. Uh, you know, I'm listening, just like Johnny said and, and Eddie said. I'm here to listen to, to what y'all got to say. That's the main thing. But I, I will tell you that. Walking around the courthouse today was was a humbling experience, knowing that uh, that it's in the shape it's in now. And you can't you can't go in. You can look through the windows, and you can see the shape of the courthouse on the outside and the inside. 
It is embarrassing. But it's no reflection on you know, it's no reflection on anybody in particular. Right now, this is something that should have been done over a period of time. We should have been maintaining that courthouse from you know, from the time that it was not being used. Uh, it is responsibility to look at the courthouse to make sure it doesn't get a good check. Well, I think what year was the courthouse? What year was it? Close? It started closed in April of 2004. Two, I thought it was 2005 or 2006. It's not only the county commissioners and the county manager, but the county ma uh, maintenance. Um, they all take part in it. Um, and you know, that been corrected? Yes. That other properties. That, how many other properties does the county have that's going to pot like that? Has anybody asked that question of the county manager? We, we've got the properties, but they're not going. Other properties on the other properties we have. One thing that I have that, that David, because I asked him the same question, and because the building is is not being used now, uh, you know, it was used as a as a museum. Uh, the clothes signs are on there now, so. But in looking at the insides of it, you know, there's some there's some walls that have been built on this side of it that are not structural walls. If you go in and start taking those walls out, trying to put it back, and then you decide, you know, the county decides we only use it for this, and you've already spent money to do one thing, now you're changing it, it's going to cost more money. The uh, the routine maintenance, the 1.5 million dollars that needs to be spent, you know, that needs to be done no matter what. Well, why? Right. And it, and it should be on the version of taxpayer side, taxpayer itself. That's right. And that's what the county commissioners have, have agreed on. You know, it's, it's, it's a huge And I think that, that what they were trying to say is we're really going to take that responsibility. Well, I'd like to ask this question. If you're running for the commissioner, what are you going to do when you go out there and try to get us to vote for you? Are you going to vote for this deal that they're talking about tonight or not? <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll give you my honest rating. Lay it on. I'm going to lay it on. There is not a deal out there yet. Yeah. I have, from everything that I've seen, hey. there is no lease agreement. Uh, I asked the question today if there is a lease agreement, what are the terms of it? How long is it going to be? You know, is it going to be 10 years or is it going to be 100 years or what? There is no decision. There. And this is coming straight from the county uh, county manager today. There is no agreement. Um, you know, the, the other things I've heard is, you know, this is going to be taken over by, you know, Earl Scruggs. The information that I've got, and again, effective communication is important. And I may not be getting it, but I've asked the question. Uh, less than 20% of the building is going to be used for Earl Scruggs. That's what I was told. Can I, can I address that? And I'll, I'll tell you why. I've heard that. Earl Scruggs is not leaving us anything. From what I understand from the destination Cleveland County, am I right? That Earl Scruggs, what Brownie Plaster told Margaret and me, was that they were going to work a deal. They were going to try to work a deal with the um, Country Music Museum in Nashville to get some of his properties on loan to the museum uptown for his, his stuff so that the county would not, so that destination Cleveland County and the Earl Scruggs Museum would not have, in Cleveland County would not have to buy his stuff or have him to leave his stuff to them um, for the tax purposes and insurance and all that sort of stuff. If they borrow it, they get it on loan to Nashville, it, it's not going to be as cost effective. It'll be much more cost effective if they get it on loan from Nashville. So that's what they were intended to do, is get the loan of his material for the for our courthouse. Whatever, now, whatever now, part. If he gets that on loan, loan, if we get it on loan, does that not mean that maybe they'll let us borrow it, not have to pay anything? But what we also have to pay a high insurance premium. Yeah, yeah, there. Have to what we insurance. also have to pay security to look after it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why maybe it won't be the 20%. I mean, what is there to get? A banjo, you know, a few of his things. And when you consider that 20%, let's again take that building and let's deduct the upstairs. Because it sounds like to me there's not really going to be a museum upstairs. There's going to be community yeah, be a stage. And I know, but there's not going to be a place for museum. Well, how I think. So if you thought about that, <laughs> 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 
don't need to approve it. I don't need to approve it. Right. 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 There's a lot of cynicism, there's a lot of comments and everything else, but I'd like to ask yeah. these two commissioners and two yeah. possible commissioners. Uh, down the road, we're talking about now, we're talking about right. the next six months, year, two years. What is your vision and the county's vision for what's going to happen when these individuals who have taken the initiative to try to get this thing up and going, where do you see it in 10 years, five years? What's the advantage to the county on down the road? Are we stumbling here over anthills when we're ignoring the mountains that are out there? I, 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 I think so. Let, let me answer this. I'd like to say, I'm most open and open. I'll give you a straight answer. You may not like it, you may like it. I think down the road and looking at this, I think the solution can be worked out, okay? I don't like to pick taxes any more than you. You know, we just went through a revamp. I got five acres and went at 43%. Mm -hmm. Me, you know, I can test it. Didn't do a good even I was convinced. I'm still gonna say this. I don't like paying it. That's why if we can attract something, just like if you got a building, sitting there, it's not being used, but if you can get two good partners to come in there and work together, and I'll set some of the calls, that's the benefit to it, okay? Some of the things like, there's no name on the building, or 20% of the building be used, my understanding, and, and I ask for the that our artifacts, and, and I thank the people that's cataloging, I was doing it. The thing is, nobody knew what was in there. Before we can start doing anything on it, we got to find out what's in there, it's gotta be stored, so it's gotta be moved from different places so we can keep it. Okay, but uh, I vision 10 years down the road, if we can get a workable solution, this is going to offset some of the costs and keep our property tax down. You know, where it was, Earl Scruggs or whoever it is, I'm not concerned with that part, okay? I'm looking at the future of that building. Can we restore that building? Can we make that a vocal point of our county? You know, and what's it going to cost us? And can we partner with a couple of groups, all set it so we don't have to pay the cost? So that's what I envision down the road if we can do it somehow. We've got humps and bumps just like this meeting. We've got humps and bumps and things we've got to work on. But you know, anytime that you go through that, it's a give or take. But that was one of the things supposed to be in the contract. We're supposed to use some of our local history, you know, that eighty percent. And with being catalog we we, I say we, whoever, is going to do it, and they've got a lady signed on from the Smithsonian Institute here helping catalog it. They know the history, and it's amazing what they're doing to set up a rotating pattern for stuff. And it was my understanding, if I'm correct, that the song and music goes along with the cotton field, say, for example, the weed bloom is in there, that something will go along with that. Something to go along with the other, something to go along with the other. Okay, they'll stay in there for a period of time, then they'll back it, they'll rotate it off. So we as citizens, if you go one time, you still don't want to go back, but if there's something new, you'll go back. So this was the intent of it, by having partly that in it, to keep rotating, <coughs> rotating. So kids in the fourth grade, you don't want to come back to the eighth grade, you're going to see the same thing. So I guess that's part of my long range vision. That answered the question. But I'll I'll do, 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 do. Brendan, Brendan pointed yeah. out earlier, okay. and, and you mentioned the 200 million. Yes, that's been proposed. I think you were rather doubtful of that number, but whether it be 170 million or 150 right. million. We, some of us in here, have worked on the Economic Development Board, and we realize right. there's a lot of money spent behind the door right. to bring industry here. And instead of sitting here waiting for industry to come to us, right. I think this is an initiative on part of some of our citizens, and they they gladly open their arms and say, please come help us. They're looking for volunteers about right. every Saturday at the courthouse to help uh, right. catalog these artifacts. And what we're looking at is, okay, I don't care what the million dollar figure is, yeah. and it's not, Brendan, that every tourist or that comes here will spend that money. Right. It's uh, it, Through economics, you'll find a multiply function. For every dollar spent here, there'll be another eight or nine generating this county through additional jobs that are brought to the county, through additional investment that's brought to the county. And longer term, I think that number out there is what we ought to keep in, 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 in focus. But what we're saying here is there's some little details here along the way that you, that, that you gentlemen are absolutely right. 
little bit of communication, understanding. And Mr. Falls, I understand that you you didn't you weren't aware of what was going on, but I think there's been a lot of information in the paper, a lot of information on television, a lot of uh, around town talk that uh, maybe if we all stick our nose into it, as you have, that you know the better we're educated, then maybe we can understand. Mr. Holbrook, I don't yield the floor. You 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 hit exactly what I was going to respond to when I when I first heard about this and when I ran for this position. One of the things that I believe very strongly in was trying to do some things to improve economic development for the county and in, and in turn enhance the quality of life for our citizens and especially our kids growing up. When you bring, and, and I sat down with business leaders, PPG, Curtis Wright, Eaton, and some of those managers and said, what, what do we really need to do as a county to help enhance other businesses to come to the county. What are some of the things we can do? And one of the one of the things they hit immediately was cultural things that when they bring visitors to the to the county, right now it's embarrassing to some degree to say that a lot of the management of our better industries live in Gaston or Charlotte. Because they don't consider their families, their wives, their children. They're looking for something more than what we can provide and offer. So when I first looked at this, I said, well, maybe this is an instrument that can be used in, in economic development to help attract uh, more businesses, more jobs, and help get our economy you know, moving forward in that direction. And, and over a period of eight or 10 years, I thought it could be a Applause. But let's bring our focus back to the courthouse. We will have the same economic impact if this our growth center were in any other building. And what we're in here tonight about is we do not want it in the courthouse. That's the bottom line. That is serious. And that is not up to the ramifications as far as the way that the system feels. They can do it. They can do it. Sure. Go ahead. I don't have a problem with it being in the courthouse. Yeah. My problem is. You know, I'm, I'm, I do agree. We need the partner. I think we have to be very careful because it sounds like this drug family is making a lot of demands. I heard someone say they want 90% of the doors. I mean, I don't know. And I don't know that anybody knows that. But we need to be careful because if we let someone have control, I mean, are our kids going to have to pay a fairly high fee to come in and see their heritage? One of the things that's going to be in the contract, the county commissioners have final say so over the bill. Okay, well, you all hear that? Is it going to be in the contract? Is it a done deal? No. No. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's done. No, it's not. If it's going to be in the contract. You can bring a Bible up here and I'll put my hand on it. It's not, it's not a done deal. Okay. Just put your hand on the Bible, don't mean to tell the truth. I think everybody thought it was a done deal is because of all the advertising. That's right. Yeah. 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 Y
I don't really think you can get them all up at one time. No. Probably not. Probably not. But I don't know. Do we need a kitchen up there? I mean, I think that some of this, you know, this is this is their dream. This is not my dream. That they want a, 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 a food service. Do we need that? Maybe well, they the, food, the food service is going to be what at the theater. They're going to build a place at the theater. The, theater. Theater. <coughs> the uh, Don Gibson Theater? No, this no. is their old grove. Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. The old grove center, uh, number uh, six, construct new bathroom facilities, an elevator, new lighting system, food services, administrative offices, new signage, and a gift shop within the center. Now that's Earl Scrooge. Yeah, now here's John Gibson. John Gibson is going to have a uh, uh, new entrance, a reception area, interior theater. They're going to have uh, amenities for performers, backstage, loading docks, dressing rooms, expanded bathroom facilities, theater signs, a catering kitchen, and administrative offices. But now this is this is what they were saying. It's going to be well, in like there. I say a lot of it is in yeah. some bad communication. And like I say, we we've started it's talking in the last time. few weeks. We've got to plan a session. And why is yeah. that that you just decided the last few weeks? Because I've been on your head. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the commissioner's meeting in October. But, you know, let, let's be fair okay. about it now. I went to the commissioner's meeting in October and I asked you all to do what we're doing. Son. Let this man get up and talk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
My motion was not to do anything other than to ask DCC, the county manager, and a county attorney to get together to discuss putting a yeah. document together to bring yeah. back for further discussion. That I would not have voted for it, Car Blanche. Uh, and I told Johnny that going in. Well, you could have scared me because your exact <laughs> words are, I've heard enough. And I that's what we're saying. I'm ready to vote to accept their proposal. What? No, I didn't say accept their proposal either. Okay. I did not say that. So we'll go back and check in a minute. You're running out of Bible thing. Put your hand on it. I didn't say I've heard enough. I did not say that. And I haven't. I would like to know why you can't use the theater on South Lafayette Street plus Gardner Street for both of those people. What's the problem with two of them being together? Why does Earl not want to do the dynamic? Because he's greedy. I don't agree with Earl. Why? Why? Does anybody know that answer? That, that, that's it. Yeah, well, I think that, that is not a problem. Because the Earl Scruggs you played it in uh, the courthouse in a day. That is not appropriate. But it would be appropriate to put it somewhere else. And the two of them should be together yeah. where the parking space is. According to what Granny Plaster uh, said, she said that there would be busting people in to so these things and busting them out. That's because we don't have parking space for them anyway. Go <laughs> I'd like to answer the question that you asked a while ago about five years from now, what do I see, and ten years from now. Uh, in 1986, I left Cleveland County to join the Air Force. Uh, I was stationed out in California, and I was out there for eight years. Whenever my wife and I decided to raise a family, we sold everything we owned, sounds corny, sold everything we owned that we couldn't fit in our car, and drove back to Cleveland County. Uh, my wife's transplant from California, but... But uh, uh, we both love it. We came back here. I want to come back home. And I'll be honest. I get, when I got out of the high school and went in the Air Force, back home to me is was different than whenever I got back eight years later. There is no stop and change. It's going to happen. There's nothing we can do about it. We're going to be growing from Charlotte this way. Uh, there, there's, I mean, there's very little we can do. But there are pieces of Cleveland County. Huh? We like growing. We like Oh, I know. I know. I know. There are pieces of Cleveland County that are, we need to maintain. Right. Things that, 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 that are our history and things that are important to us. Five years from now, I want to see those things maintained. I want to see them preserved. And I want to see them preserved the best way that we can. And the most economical way we can. Uh, because I pay too much in taxes. I'll just be honest. Um, everybody in this room, I think, is paying too much in taxes. So, what I'd like to see is those historical monuments, those places that are important to me, going down to the, the Broad River Greenway. I remember jumping in the creek. I mean, I remember those kind of things. I want to keep doing those things, and I want to take my kids to do those things. Um, you know, I, I think that we're going to grow. You know, and I think eventually, even though I'd hate to think of a high rise in, in Shelby. I think it's eventually going to happen. I think that's a good thing. I think eventually it's going to happen. So, you know, I'm used to seeing one certain thing, and I'd like to see it the way it was when I was a kid, but I think our county commissioners are doing what they think is right with the information that they're giving. And I think y'all are too. I think y'all are, are trying to use the information you're giving and, and affect change. So that's what I'd like to see the five years. Let me mention one other thing, Bill. Uh, I agree with what Justin said a lot. There's there's twelve counties in the in the metropolitan Charlotte region of economic development. Cleveland County is dead last economic growth. If you go back and check our history and our growth in the last fifteen years, and it's been pretty well stagnated. And why do you think that is? Part of the reason is because we are not being visionary and we're not doing the things that are necessary to attract <coughs> new business in the, in the county. And, and I'll, go, I'll get on one of my pet peeves too. Uh, transportation, when I, when I was in Cleveland County some years ago, Lincoln County was here Cleveland County was here, and you, and you talk about paying too much taxes. You ought to sit where we are sitting, 
and try to balance the budget and tell law enforcement they can't have raises or they get minimal raises and they can go to Gaston County and other places and make considerable more dollars than they're making in Cleveland County. It's a budgetary strain. You can't lower taxes unless you get some growth coming in to give you more of a tax revenue base. Lincoln County, 321. Just drive up 321 and look off to your right into, into the uh, economic development area and you'll see what four lane transportation bypass does. Secondly, uh, uh, one of the reasons that I really and the commissioners really supported the Duke project at Cliffside and spent hours upon hours upon hours trying to get the thing through Raleigh when it was just sitting on desk was the fact that it had the equivalent of doing massive things for our citizens. <laughs> and by that I mean basically the tax base that we will eventually, not right now, but when the plant is completed, that we will eventually receive from the Duke Cliffside plant will be the equivalent of over $3,200,000 homes. The education system will receive over a million and a half dollars a year from that project. It's, it's a project that's so massive that how many, how many new businesses would it take to equalize that? It's another component that gives us growth potential. And, and I looked at this when I started looking at it as a component that gave us economic growth opportunities to enhance, to be another tool to enhance business to come into here and try to get on our legislators' necks enough, and maybe we need to sick you on them like you've gotten on us. Uh, to get the bypass, you know, yeah, but you know, that's, the bypass becomes so important for, for Cleveland County, and it keeps getting pushed, pushed down. I'll give you another thing that we get faced with in the county. In our transit DOT region, there's about a six county region, I think. We get updates from DOT on road improvements, adjustments, and time schedules, and so forth. <coughs> The last adjustment we got in December was 22 projects adjusted. Some delayed, some accelerated. Of the 22, the two that were mentioned in Cleveland County were delayed. There were 11 in our Dale County. 11 out of the 22, and they were accelerated <coughs> on a new project. So a lot of this comes because we we're not doing some of the things that we need to be doing, and that's, I mean, I got a passion for Cleveland County, and I, and, and I don't mind singing it, and I don't mind taking the hits, uh, and I'm taking my fair share, but my heart is to try to do what's best for this county, and that's what Johnny says too. And yeah, we may make the wrong decisions sometimes, and I hope I'm not too, small of a man take suggestions and recommendations from, from you. But I'm, I'm rambling, and I don't mean to do that, but I want, I want, I want to give you a little bit more of the facts that, that, that we continually get faced with sitting on the board. And, and you, you, you people are getting your point across, and, and maybe we can do some things. To I like what, what, they, what, what maybe uh, Eddie and I need to do is commit to vote down on the form in the next four, five, six weeks. We, we've got some things already scheduled. And <coughs> what y'all need to do, we'll we'll get somebody to drop you an email. It'll, it'll be in the paper or whatever. But but, but let us ask this, this one question. Let's get right back to this thing. Mm -hmm. Would we not have that same economic impact that we're looking for on the Girl Scrub Center if it was in another building? Mm -hmm. I think that's the whole bottom line. If you yeah. they want to do it, we're happy to for them. But if it was in another building, everybody would be. The thing is, there's one of the guys in Destiny Speed in County called me and he was telling me he loved playing. I said, look, I'm not in Destiny Speed yeah. County. They're the ones that got a proposal. What we're looking at is what yeah. we've got, what someone would like to use, what money we can save, and how we can maybe create both the groups together <coughs> for the buzz of the county. And we're all in this together, so that, that's correct. Judy and Helmut, but... Uh, so basically what I'm hearing then is if 
We were to shoot down Destination Cleveland County's idea of putting the Earl Scrub sign on the court square and say you can't do that. Then they would pull out and not do anything. Is this what you're telling us? No, no, I didn't tell you that. But I'm happy this was going to happen. You've got to discuss them now. Yeah. Let me say something about my place. I've been standing here, I don't know nothing about the politics, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Meetings and junk like that. Primarily what I've understood from the get-go was when I first started hearing about the Earl Scrub Center thing up in the courthouse. I have been born right here in Cleveland County. I remember them any time back as a kid, teenager sitting on the, the steps of the courthouse picking a guitar singing to my girlfriend I was raised up here. All about this, it's sentimental value. The point that I have understood, it's not, it's, the courthouse has been neglected since it's closed down. That's primarily the, what's wrong with Cleveland County and the city limits. I mean, I, my father worked with cotton mills, Dover Mill. Every time a new house would come empty somewhere, they'd paint it. We'd move. I mean, you know, that's the way we were. This poor old common folk just moved from place to place. But it's the point that we, as citizens, and just in general people, we don't understand why it has to be Earl Scruggs. What has Earl Scruggs ever done for Cleveland County? Why not the, the whole idea about what it is. <clears throat> the whole courthouse is closed down. It has been neglected. And you ever ride over on the other side over there on the back side of Esther Mill, Cleveland Cloth Mill, over here off Mary Street, you can also say these part of town have been nothing except neglected. Nobody cares about it anymore. So it's, it's the politician part of it. But if all these millions of dollars is going to be spent on the courthouse, I guarantee if it came right down to it, you'd get enough old fuddy duddy like myself, retired, that ain't able to do a whole lot. But I'd volunteer my time and effort to, to be a carpenter up there to help put out a little bit of effort in order to rebuild our courthouse, to do something worthwhile, to keep our little museum so we can have some heritage. But if you turn into Earl Scrooge, I've never met Earl Scruggs. Know nothing about him. I've heard his music. But I mean, you could put something in there that would contribute to the younger generation. You could, move the, you could move the museum into a corner building somewhere, but make the courthouse represent Cleveland County's area. Uh, Right, Mr. Shields? 
being as serious as it can be, it's not anything about other than the, the courthouse has been neglected for all these years. Yeah. The biggest part of Cleveland County, uptown, has been neglected. Why not put something in there that the younger generation is going to be the ones that brings a future for Cleveland County? Hey. Their money. Right. It's not going to be us old putty days. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, old old I'm not going to go to a museum to see. One, one, one more statement, one please. <laughs> <laughs> Has music ever done anything economically for Cleveland County? No. no. Come on, commissioners. Has it? You're shaking your head now. Like bluegrass music. How many people like bluegrass music? You better believe it. What? What's it? Bluegrass music. 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 Bluegrass music.
that when people would call and they'd ask to speak to Earl, she would say, now, if, if this is, and I've read this in magazines too, if this is about uh, him playing, go ahead and, and, you know, if you want to book him, go ahead and settle this with me. And then I'll get him on the phone because he's going to send you right back to me. <laughs> so Louise became a tough business person. And just this past year, uh, she was nominated for the first time ever for a manager to be nominated into the Country Music Hall of Fame. And I don't know, I think the outcome maybe is this month. Uh, and Doug Mays told me this because Doug was one of the 200 people who voted, uh, who gets inducted into it. And he was saying, I'm going to vote for Louise. Now, on the flip side, I think probably Louise carried this over to the extreme. I've heard people say that Earl would come home and he couldn't pick a banjo with him anymore because Louise didn't want him to pick up a banjo unless he got money. <laughs> and I think Louise was a tough negotiator, and I think this is what happened when when this fell apart. And I'll tell this as, as well as I can. And when they were going to do Don Gibson and Earl Scruggs and all the other people in Cleveland County that were musicians to be honored together, that Louise said, "Why not the whole building for Earl?" She was always looking to promote. And, and push that envelope like Dick Kilpatrick taught her to a long time ago. So you, you all know when you go buy a car and they say this is the secret price, I mean, you're not going to pay that. Nobody negotiated. <coughs> Nobody got in the game and said, we're not going to give you the whole building. We'll do this. But, now I know this from, from uh, the people who were there, that as time went on, that she became more adamant that, that it was said at, at the, the Scruggs house that she thought that Earl Scruggs should not be honored in the same building. Now maybe this, maybe she didn't like Don Gibson. Maybe this was just her tactic to get it off for Earl. We don't know what her motives were there. But she became more and more adamant that she didn't want Don Earl to be honored in the same space as Don Gibson. So that, and then, and then from what I understand, she won 90% of the door. You know, she wanted everything, which is how you negotiate. And then you come to the middle term, which is what we're going to have to do. We're all in this together. And this belongs, this is our county. But it belongs.